In this video, we'll talk about accessibility options and how we would go about implementing them to finish up the setup for our options menu. In future videos, we'll set up our centralized data storage, polish off our menu with some hotkeys to move between tabs, we'll stylize our menus and much more. If you want to see that, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss out on when those videos actually get uploaded. As always, make sure to leave a comment if you have any questions or issues with the code. Now let's move into our editor so I can show you how we would go about implementing the toggles and switches. So before we actually move into creating any uh, new scenes or anything, I just wanted to say I have been putting this video off for a little bit. I realized I can show how we would go about implementing the menus and toggles for these options, but what I can't do is do justice to the actual implementation of the mechanics themselves, at least not in a single video. Truth is, I could just teach you how to do a hue shift for colorblind settings and leave it at that, but that doesn't really feel like the right thing to do. I put in a bit of time asking around uh, about what types of options people want, what options don't make sense, or just end up not getting used because it turns the game into a uh, bit of a trip, so to speak. This, however, really does open up a talk about how we go about designing games. More specifically, designing games while keeping it accessible to everyone. In the description, there will be a link to the Game Makers Toolkit, more specifically a series that they created on this exact topic. I suggest going and watching the whole series so you can gain a good understanding of what you want to keep in mind when you are actually creating your game. Now, with that said, let's actually go and create a toggle for some subtitles, and I'll show you how you can use this kind of system to create other options and how you kind of go about implementing them themselves. So we are going to create a new scene of user interface. It's going to be a control node. We are going to call this the menu underscore. Actually, let's just call this the subtitles underscore toggle underscore. So to this, we want to add a hbox. We're going to give this the constant separation of 64 pixels. We're going to add a label to our hbox. Give this the name of subtitles. We're going to make the actual theme, theme overrides font. So we're going to change the font size for this. We're going to change this to 32 pixels, make it a little bit big, nice and easy, uh, easy to read. Now we're going to add a V separator. V separator, I don't usually add separation to these. I tend to do other methods. Good idea to actually add it to these. So I'm going to use a 124 separation for this. I'm now going to duplicate both the label and the separator. And then the second label that we created, I'm going to move that below the uh, second separator. So we'll have a label, separator, separator, label. Now, on our HBox container, we're going to add one more thing, and it's going to be called a check button. This check button will go between the two separators. With this setup, you can kind of see the uh, general layout of what we've got here. We've got the name, uh, toggle switch for us, and then the second label is going to be what this state is, so what its current state is, i.e. is it on or is it off? So because this will start off, I'm going to just name it off. Now we can go through and rename these labels, so I can call this one the state underscore label. I can call the top one the name underscore label. And that's pretty much all we need to do. So let's hit Control S to save this. We'll go into Scenes, go into Options menu, and we'll save it in there. Now, before I go and uh, modify this anymore, add a script to it, I'm going to go and add it to the Accessibility tab in our Settings container. So I'm going to use the same setup that I usually do, where it goes the Container tab, a Margin container, and then adding to that Margin container, we'll add a Scroll box, or a Scroll container, and then a V box. And then we can add our settings button with Control Shift A. So subtitles toggle button. There we go. Now, if we go to the tab container and change the current tab or increment that towards the accessibility, we'll get to see how that's lined up. Now, I'm going to hit F6 and make sure that's lined up in a way that I want it to be. So graphics, sound, and accessibility. Perfect. And that will toggle for us. And now actually go back to our subtitles toggle button scene and add a script to it. We're not going to need a class name for this, but we are going to need to set up kind of a few things. And by the end of the video, you'll kind of understand why I'm setting things up like this. So 
the first thing that we want to uh, do is add an onready variable to the state label. We're going to typecast this as a label. And then we're going to add one more onready for the check button. There we go. See where I went wrong there? We'll typecast this as a check button. So now we're going to access our ready function. Now we want to connect the check button signal in our ready function. So the signal we actually want to connect, if we check or click on the uh, check button, we can go into node signals. We want to grab this toggled signal because it gives a button pressed Boolean. We want a Boolean, we want a true false, right? So what we're going to write or type is check button dot toggled dot connect. We're going to connect this to on underscore subtitles underscore toggled. Now we'll go create this function. Remember that it takes in a button pressed and a bool. So I'm going to, we'll, you know, we'll just name it button pressed and bool. So you can rename this to make it a little bit easier for you to uh, kind of think about. Usually button pressed makes sense, you know, is it pressed, yes or no? That's fine. You could just add value if you want to keep it short and simple. We'll leave it as this for now. So what do we want to do in this function? For now, we're going to write pass and we're going to go create a new function. We'll do it above the uh, signal related function. And this function is just going to be called set underscore label underscore text. Inside of its parentheses, we're actually going to pass in the button underscore pressed, which is a ball. So we're going to pass that in as a ball. And then we're going to do something very simple. It's just an if else check. We're going to write if button pressed does not equal true. So if it does not equal true, i.e. it's false, we are going to go and change the state label dot text we're going to set that equal to. Now, you could do this in a uh, much different way. This on subtitles uh, toggle button is automatically passing through a Boolean, right? So you don't technically need this if else check. To show that you don't need it, what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to finish off setting up this else statement. So we'll just set the state label dot text equal to on if it is pressed, but we won't call it. Instead, we'll go into the uh, signal that we created, the on subtitles to uh, toggled signal, and we are going to go state label dot text is equal to str button pressed. Now, you kind of understand, or you'll probably end up kind of guessing what this is going to do. It's going to set this equal to true or false. So Let's think about why you may not want to do that. See, true, false, true, false. Now, true, false is uh, fine, but it's coding logic, right? It, it's one of those things that as a player, you may not be entirely used to seeing. So having just on off might make more sense. So that's the first thing we're going to do is we're going to call that set label text and we'll pass in button pressed. Now we'll hit F6 and we'll give it a test. Now button's toggled on, it's on, off, it's off. That way we've got a very good way of showing that the button is actually toggled. Now this goes back into accessibility options in general. A lot of accessibility options really do come down to a bit of a design choice. Say, take this options menu for example. What if somebody doesn't have the entirely best eyesight and cannot actually tell the difference between this being toggled on and off? Like what if they don't know that this being to the right side is on and it being to the left side is off? They have to sit and guess, whereas having this label here literally tells them it's on, it's off, it's on, it's off. Now, moving back into our code, the next thing we want to do is actually have something that will control the settings for everything else, specifically the settings for subtitles in our game. Now, if I uh, go to project, project settings, and I go down into my window, I need to change this into windowed mode, and then I hit F5. Forget that the uh, music is extremely loud, so I'm going to go and mute the master for now. And now I hit F5. 
you'll see up here, if I go to remote in the left side of our scene tree, you'll see this kind of uh, setup, right? We've got our route, our game manager, signal bus, a main menu, and all of its things. Now, what happens if I hit start game? Okay. Now, keep in mind that if I go into the options menu, which is here, that this is where the variable for toggling on and off, or the yeah, the true, no, the actual true false boolean is actually stored. Right now, it's stored within our options menu, right? So, how do I stop, or at least get this to go to other scenes that aren't currently loaded when this unloads itself? Because if I hit start game, the options menu disappears. It now no longer exists which means we've got to figure out a way around that. Now, there is a very simple and easy way around this, and this is what's going to end up leading into uh, the next video, which is centralizing our data a bit. Now, to show off a very kind of simple way of centralizing our data and being able to store it in certain places, we need to do two things. The first one is we need to have an auto load, so a signal bus, a signal that will be able to be called anywhere and everywhere, this signal will be for, so we'll use signal on underscore subtitles underscore are toggled. It will be a Boolean value, so we'll just write value and bool. I'm going to use my normal setup for setting up uh, signals where I create a couple lines. I create a function for emitting the signal, so emit on underscore subtitles underscore toggled. It will need a boolean, so value, bool, a void return type, there we go. And now we want to emit this signal, so on subtitles toggled dot emit, and we want to pass through the value. There we go. So we're now getting the signal emitted, or at least we've set up the functionality for this signal to emit and you know, exist. We now want to go into our on subtitles toggled. Uh, button inside of our subtitles toggle button and we want to call our signal bus and then we want to emit that function for on subtitles toggled and we want to pass in the button pressed so this will pass in that true false boolean anywhere we want it to go now the question is where do we want it to go now there are a few places you can put this but this is this kind of falls into what i want the next video to be which is centralizing our data so in our auto loads folder, we're going to create a new script, and this will be called the settings data container. Now, the settings data container is going to need to do a few things. Right now, it's going to need to have access to the ready function, and it's going to need to actually be able to connect to that signal bus dot on subtitles toggled signal. So signal bus on uh, subtitles toggled dot connect we're going to connect this to on underscore subtitles underscore toggled create a function for that remember that it's taking a value of type bool has no return type so we'll make a void return type and now we're going to want to store this boolean value in side of another variable right so we'll write var subtitles underscore toggled or even better we can do subtitles state because the state of the subtitles whether it's true or false is kind of what we're going for so we want to go state of subtitles or subtitle state we want to make sure that's typed as a ball and to just preset it set it as something we'll set it to false now in that new function we created all we have to do is call our variable and then set that equal to the value. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type print, and then I'm going to print out subtitle state. Then I'm going to hit Control S and save. Now, one thing I haven't done yet is if I go into the project, project settings, up to auto load, and then go into my auto load, we're going to want to set up the settings data container. Now, the node name is something you can uh, kind of change. I'm going to call this the uh, settings container. We'll just call it the uh, settings container. A little bit shorter than before, but yeah, just easier to call basically. So with that done, what I can now do is go and hit 
F5 or F6, sorry, and go into the subtitles menu here. Now, if we look at the output, we're seeing this actually print out the output the way we want it to. And yet, if I go to remote, where I'm only running this specific scene, you'll see that we've got our auto loads are still running. The main menu doesn't exist anymore, but this scene does. That is going to send out uh, and store the state of our subtitles inside the settings data container that we've made. Now, the settings data container will actually be the storage for all of the settings that we need. Now, why do we want to do that? Well, it really allows you to kind of design and build out a, well, a centralized storage that you can then kind of put inside of a smaller container and save it. And of course, if something needs to pull from another storage, they can pull from this specific function or this auto load. You can set up a new function for get underscore subtitles underscore state. It'll take zero parameters, but it will return a Boolean value. And then all you do is return the subtitles state. That way, nothing is actually modifying subtitle state other than the signal we originally created. And then anything that needs to do something based off of this state, in this case, we could turn subtitles on and off or toggle them in a different scene. They can just use this functionality from this auto loaded node and get whether this is true or false or not. And you'd be able to do that in the ready function or on a function that will toggle those if we create another menu that can be uh, used in game, like a pause menu, for instance. Now, using this type of system and then starting to store things in this way will really allow us to kind of add as much as we want to without going a bit too, I guess, overboard or getting things a bit too uh, spaghetti coded. It just allows that kind of easier access to growth and uh, just making things larger and, and expanding things in general. Now, that is all I'm going to cover for accessibility in this video. I will probably a bit further in the future actually cover how to set up certain uh, functionality for like actually properly get proper subtitles in the game to go over voiceovers and show you how to set those up and probably a little bit more than that. Now, as I said before, at the very start of the video, make sure you go and watch that playlist that that is in the description. It is absolutely astounding. It is amazing. It's like, it's great. It will teach you a lot of things about how you want to think about designing games around accessibility and making sure everybody has a chance to play your game. Now, with that said, uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.